One of the biggest challenges when we started the Blue Brain project is that we had to work out how to connect neurons. Uh, we had a lot of experimental data that showed us how neurons, where they are located, how they touch each other and where they form synapses. But we didn't have a general rule how to do this for thousands or millions of neurons. When one neuron has to grow and connect with another neuron, how those branches get there and position their synapses in an exact location. You could imagine one situation where the neuron grows and it smells through chemicals and gets attracted and repelled from another branch until it finds and searches out another neuron and then it forms connections. But what we discovered is actually it's, it's, it's much simpler than that. Basically, the, what we think must be happening is the neurons are growing as physically independent of each other as possible. They're just expressing themselves, uh, saying, I'm, I want this shape, this is my shape, and I'm going to grow like this. And then when they've all grown together, it's, they just take what they get when they bump into each other. It's just going to grow and it's going to rely on accidental collisions to decide where it's going to form synapses. It's a, it's a remarkable design principle of the brain. Uh, so the way that we do these experiments um, is uh, we, we, we need two kinds of data sets. One is we need lots of model neurons. To get them, we record from a cell, we inject a dye into them, and we draw them in three dimensions. We do that for many, many cells, so we've got many, many model neurons. The second data set is we record from two cells, and we inject dyes in both of them, cells that are connected with synapses between them, and then we trace the branches and we find out exactly where the synapses are. And we do that many, many times so that we understand where synapses are formed between any two types of cells. In the in the model, we then take these individual cells, we put them in the same space, and there's lots of branches that are intersecting. We have an algorithm that runs on a supercomputer and it looks for all the places where they bump into each other. We then take these places where they bump into each other and we generate a map of locations. And we compare that with the map of locations that we saw in experiments. And what we discovered was that map was very, very similar. There are some exceptions, and today we can now apply these exceptions and essentially predict the positions of synapses in the brain. Uh, this discovery that if you put neurons together in the same space, that where they bump into each other accidentally happens to be the way that it's done in biology or the locations that you find in biology, makes the problem of building very detailed brain circuits much easier. And in fact, this design principle is giving rise to a lot of other insights because this principle actually allows the, the, the connect home, the positions, to be very robust as well. So for example, if you delete lots of neurons or you change their positions and rotate them and change their orientation, it doesn't really change the connectivity. It doesn't change the locations of the synapses. So that means that our brains are probably very similar in the positions of synapses in the same species. And it also means that it's very robust. You can lose a lot of neurons and you're not going to change very much the statistical locations of synapses in the brain.